topic to Steve with Legacy Eats, bringing you drunken time noodles today. So wash your hands and lace up the tennis shoes. This one's gonna knock your socks off. So people ask me a lot, how do I do this or how do I do that? If there's secrets to this or secrets to that? And I'll tell you one of the most valuable pieces of information I ever got was from a chef, and he told me about the meaning of the term mise en place. Mise en place is a term they use in restaurants that means everything in its place. Essentially meaning that before you start a recipe, before you turn a burner on, before you start any part of it, make sure everything is in its place, which means you measure out each individual ingredient, which means if there's slicing and dicing to be done, you do that ahead of time. You go ahead and portion everything out and put it in its own little vessel, and then you double check your prep list just to make sure that you've got everything that you need. It's going to make you feel much more put together, and it's going to really teach you a lot about integrity of recipes. Because cooking a lot of times is not just throwing stuff in the bowl. It's understanding how to read a recipe and how to gather your ingredients properly. And in the process of gathering your ingredients and you're seeing terms and things that you don't understand, search for the resources you need. Know the difference in a julienne and a dice, stuff like that. Today, for instance, we're doing drunken time noodles. And one of the most important parts about this dish, aside from your basics, is knowing the difference between Thai basil and American basil or Italian basil. So Italian basil has got a much more sweeter, much more softer leaf to it. Thai basil is a much more sturdier leaf, and Thai basil lends that flavor of anise. And that's going to give it like a slight licorice flavor, right? That's very, very important to drunken noodles. And to be honest, I've tried it with and without, and there's nothing you can do to make it taste similar to what you get in a Thai restaurant, unless you use Thai basil. So make sure that you've got the proper ingredients. Make sure that you're writing all this stuff down and double checking before you do that once a month food run, right? Because we're all in quarantine now. The other thing is making sure you're aware of how spicy this is because you don't want to hurt yourself and you certainly don't want to hurt the people you're cooking for. So we're going to have three sources of spiciness today. The first is going to be sriracha. The second is going to be Thai chilies. And the third is going to be serrano. So just for a visual reference, to make it a little bit easier, this would be a serrano. And that's going to be spicier than a jalapeno, right? And this is going to be your Thai chili. They have red and green. I prefer to use green, but feel free to use blue. I found for spiciness, the typical Thai restaurant that makes drunken noodles uses one or two of those for each portion that they give you. So one or two of these and just one of these. And understand, if you want it spicier, leave the white part and the seeds in. I'm not ready to get down on that level yet, but come on. And because you've got your ingredients already portioned out, all you have to do to make the sauce is just drop and go. It makes it really, really simple when you've got everything together. The first thing we're gonna do is make our sauce. We're gonna start with one tablespoon of brown sugar, a teaspoon of minced garlic, a teaspoon of sriracha, a teaspoon of oyster sauce, two teaspoons of black soy, one and a half teaspoons of fish sauce, and two tablespoons of tamari soy. Grab your whisk and whisk that right up. The sauce is literally that easy. Your next step is gonna to be to grab two pounds of chicken breast, and you're gonna lay those out, and you're gonna slice those very thinly. After you slice your chicken really, really thin, you're gonna place that into a container. You're gonna take a fourth of the sauce you just made, and you're gonna dump that in with the chicken to let it marinate for a minimum of four hours. We're gonna take two onions, and we're gonna cut those into thin half moons. Then we're gonna slice some red pepper and green pepper to go along with our onions. Pull your Thai basil off of its stem and put that to the side. I find that tomatoes help a ton with this dish. Sometimes I use plum tomatoes, but today I wanted to go with a multicolored cherry tomato. I believe they break down really, really easy, and I love the flavor they have with We're going to get some fresh lime. We're going to have some green onions sliced on the bodies. We're going to take a couple carrots, and we're going to slice those into little tiny sticks. Then we're going to take our peppers. We're going to dice up a serrano into little small pieces, and we're going to do the same thing with the Thai chili peppers. And that makes things really, really easy. I did the dicing and the slicing beforehand and portioned everything out so we're good to go. Now you can talk about your noodles. Typically when you get drunken noodles, they're going to give you a wide noodle. It's kind of known as like a rice flake or a rice square. They have so many different types. They have a lot of different ways you can reconstitute these noodles because they come dehydrated. These noodles, for instance, sat in super hot tap water for about 30 minutes or so. And for me, when I'm making something like drunken noodles, I don't like to boil the rice noodles beforehand. I find that if I soak it in super hot tap water for about 30 minutes or so, that it gets it soft enough to work with, but it doesn't overcook it. So the little bit left in it absorbs the sauce when you put it in and it finishes cooking there. You most certainly want to try this with a wok. If you don't, make sure you can get a pan that gets really, really hot. It's really important that you use the right cooking device when you're trying to recreate that flavor from that restaurant that you miss so bad while you're in quarantine. For me, that's Thai food. So I'm gonna try to do my thing right here. I'm gonna use this electric wok. This right here works perfectly. The heat hits it very, very fast and it's very, very efficient, distributes it great. We're gonna get a new stove soon and that's got an open flame on it. 
I know there's a walk around here that's like 40 years old. I can't wait to see that bad boy in action. We're gonna get this cleared down, wash our hands. I'll show you the chicken that you marinated earlier and what that's supposed to look like. And then we'll talk about how we're gonna build this in our wok. Let's start with mint garlic. Serrano. And the bird paste. Make sure you get a separate tongs for your raw chicken and your water. This is just how I built it. I like the garlic to get a little crispy. Then you're ready. Sometimes less is more. You don't want to be like, you don't want to go absolutely crazy and just add a whole bunch of extra of this and that because it really throws off the balance of it, you know? And just a touch of water to help those noodles finish off. Lime juice at the very end. And this isn't going to follow an absolute drunken noodle recipe, but this is the closest I can get it to what I'm used to in the restaurant. I like it even more. I hope you like it too. All you gotta do now is throw it on a plate and let people dig in. So drunken noodles, homie. Oh, cool. Thank you. 